If I pluck my low E string here with none of my fingers on the neck at all, it's vibrating along its entire length from where it connects to the instrument up here to where it connects to the instrument down here at the bridge. It's vibrating along its entire length. But if I were to put my fingers, say, here on the neck of the guitar, I'm forcing the string against that piece of wire right there. That's called a fret right there, as you probably already know. I'm forcing the string against that piece of wire, and I'm stopping the vibration of the string at that point. So that means this part of the string up here isn't doing anything anymore. I've shortened the length of the string. It's no longer this long. It's only this long. And the further I move my hand up the neck, the shorter I'm making the string. Well, the shorter the string is, the faster it vibrates, the closer together that the waves are that it sends out, and we humans have this experience of the pitch getting higher. See, I just am continually making the string shorter and shorter, and therefore the pitch is getting higher and higher. That's how you actually manipulate pitch to actually play songs on your instrument. So, the three factors involved in controlling pitch on stringed instruments is the thickness of the string, how tightly they're stretched, but most notably the length of the string, and that's what fretting is when you're moving your fingers around on your frets. Okay, that's basically all that you have to know about the science of pitch in order to understand how your guitar works. The next big question that we're going to ask ourselves is the uh, a huge question. I love to get people to understand this question. So many people have misconceptions about this. If you don't understand about this, you don't really, you're not going to get anything really about music. Uh, I know they explain this different ways, different places, but you got to trust me, this is really, uh, particularly as you go through this program, you're going to see this is where you're really going to see how pitch works in music. Um, so this is our first, we, we just talked about the science of pitch. This is our first big uh, thing on the actual aesthetics of pitch. How, and aesthetics, what does that mean? That's, that's the artful usage of something. It's about how we use something in an art form. Um, so this is the first real aesthetic question about how pitch works, how we use these pitches in the art form that we call music, and it goes like this. You know that music is a language, right? And like any language, music has an alphabet. And long before they can teach you how to use anything in, an, in a language at all, they have to teach you how the alphabet works. And the first thing that you need to understand about that alphabet is how many basic units there are in it. For example, you know that in the English language, you have an alphabet that consists of 26 units. And to form all these different words and sentences and stuff like that, you select units out of that 26-unit alphabet, and you arrange them in different patterns. What do we call these patterns? We call them words. And you know that all the thousands and thousands of words that you know in the English language are all created out of this same basic 26-unit English alphabet. Well, the same thing is going on in music. Music is a language, and it has an alphabet as well. And we would like to know how many units it has in it. And the reason for that is, is all the music you've ever heard, from Bach to the Beatles to Bush and back again, including, don't tell you, let, let anybody tell you that, like, Indian music or African music or Chinese music is, is like really that different from ours. Yes, it is different. Yes, it has some significant differences, but the truth of the matter is the simila similarities far, far outweigh the differences. And so essentially all the music you've ever heard is constructed out of this same basic alphabet in music. And you first question that you need to understand is how many units are there in that alphabet? Or in other words, how many basic notes are there? How many notes? Now, you know that they repeat again in different octaves. We'll be talking about what that means, too. But in the musical alphabet, how many basic units are there? Take a moment, even if you want to pause the machine even for a moment and think about it, and then I'll give you the answer. Well, let me tell you, let me start by telling you the most common wrong answers. By far, the most common wrong answer is eight. And I go wrong, and they go wrong. What do you mean? Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, eight. Aren't there eight notes in music? You know, d they taught us that pattern back in kindergarten, and didn't they give us that idea that everything was made out of those eight notes? Well, the first problem with that is, uh, we repeated do twice. We began with do, and we ended with do. So we, we repeated one of the notes. So it can't be eight. Second most common answer then is people go, well then, okay, seven. And I go, wrong. And they go, wrong, what do you mean? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Seven. Nobody's heard of an H or an I or a J or a K notes. It, it always seems to just go up to G's. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven. What's wrong with that? 
Well, I go, the problem with that is A through G, those are just the white keys on the piano. What about the black keys up here? And people go, well, those are the sharps and flats, right? And I go, yeah. And they go, well, I was kind of given the impression that the sharps and flats are somehow different than the white keys on the piano. And I go, I know why you think that, because that's kind of the dumb way they usually try to teach music. But in the end, nothing could be further from the truth. You're going to find out that the black keys are just as common, just as important, and do not reflect any different kind of phenomenon than the white keys do. People go, but wait a minute, that's A and that's A sharp right there. Isn't A like the real note and A sharp is like the, some weird modification of that? And I go, no, actually nothing could be further from the truth. And the only thing that ever made us think there was some kind of hierarchy there is the kind of a strange system that they created over the centuries to assign names to these notes. Uh, but in the end, they just decided to call that A and they just decided to call it A sharp. By the way, people go, well, then why did they color code it like that? Why, if all the notes are equally important, why didn't they just just make them all the same color. Where did this black and white color coding system come from? And I go, it really doesn't have much to do cosmically with music. It really just has more to do with human visual perception. I can look, I can practically look at the ceiling and go, okay, I'm going to play an A. And I swivel around and I can go right to that note like immediately because I have memorized that, for example, A is just to the right of center in the group of three black keys. So really it's just a convenience for your eye to see where you are. And it's left everybody with this impression that the black keys are different different than the white keys and they aren't. Um, now, um, and some people go, but wait a minute, I took piano lessons for a while and, and, and all we ever did was play the white keys. And, and my question then to people is, well, how long did you take piano lessons for? And they go, ah, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a year or so. I go, well, see, that's it. If you'd stuck with it longer, gradually they would have just uh, included more and more of the black keys until you just found out that, in, that you use the black keys just as much as the white keys. Now, I know you're here to take guitar lessons. Here I am showing you the keyboard again. But remember, this does exactly, basically exactly the same thing that your guitar does and sometimes it's just easier to see music theories on the keyboard and then we're going to translate them as we go uh, into uh, onto the guitar. So what is the answer? How many notes are there in the system of pitch that we use in the western world uh, to play music? Well the answer is seven white keys and five black keys. See, there's a group of two and a group of three before they begin to repeat. Seven white keys, five black keys, the answer is twelve. There is 12 notes in our pitch system, and that's going to come as a surprise to a lot of you. But trust me, you've got to believe what I'm talking about. And you want to think of this as your alphabet in the language of music. You will never really understand music, at least in any kind of modern context at all, if you don't look at music that way. It's a language, it has an alphabet, and that alphabet has 12 units in it. And then all we do is select units out of that alphabet and form them into different patterns and type them, if you will, on our typewriter over here. Remember our analogy of music is a language, then a guitar is just something like a typewriter. And that's what all your various finger patterns are about. Hi, I'm Scotty West, creator of the Absolutely Understand Guitar Video Home Study Program. Hey, thanks for all the positive feedback on our video guitar lessons. We're now uploading new lessons right from our DVD Home Study Program. Each lesson is 70 minutes long, but we've chopped them up into 10-minute chapters to fit on YouTube, so each lesson will have seven chapters. It's critical that you watch these chapters in order. Make sure you start with Lesson 1, Chapter 1, then move to Lesson 1, Chapter 2, etc. When you've finished all the chapters for Lesson 1, then move on to Lesson 2. Hey, some of this stuff you might already know, and some of it's a little dry. You're going to wonder, do I really need to know this stuff? The answer is yes. Each one of these chapters contains little gems of information that nobody's told you yet, and these are the missing pieces that are preventing you from seeing the big picture. Don't cheat yourself out of these valuable realizations. Stick with the program. Also, consider our complete DVD home study program. Our high-resolution DVD video is much better than these fuzzy little YouTube clips, and you'll also get all our cool printed material, too. So good luck with your music and enjoy the lessons.